rendering this whole area here. This is a job that I did last year. It's going to be a conservatory. So we've got some beads to put up. We've got some prep to sort out. We've got to cover these up. And then we've got to go for a bit of a swim inside this swimming pool. <laughs> this is fun, isn't it? Tell we've had bad weather. But this is priority. So I'm going to whack some beads on. I've only got two more to put on. Can't do that one yet. I ain't got on the big level, but I'm coming back to do the scratch. Um, so we're just gonna get done what we can. Let's get through it. So let's talk about mixing. I do all my mixing in a big bath. This can get two mixes in. So I'm gonna talk scratch coat, it's four to one. It's four to one. I'll add a tiny bit of SBR to make it stickier. Only in the scratch show. Never had SBR to the top coat. I'm putting this. This is integral waterproofers. I put this in the mix. Now, what I do, I do not drink this stuff. I don't know why anyone would. What I've done, this was a 500 milliliter can. I've cut it in half, giving me 250 milliliters. What I do is I add 250 milliliters of this to one bag of cement. So two mixes in, it'd be 250 mil each time. And that's how you gauge it. For each gauge, four to one, you add in 250 milliliters of waterproof to the mix. So that's a quick gauge on how I mix it. I'm gonna mix it up and I'm gonna start whacking it on the walls. So the first one, scratch, four to one. Top coat, five to one. Let's crack on. <laughs> Time to break in a new trowel as a sand cement. This is my new carbon steel Nella trowel, and I uh, spoke about this in previous videos. It needs breaking in, and this is the time to do it. So, if you've got a new trowel, make sure you bring it rendering with you because this is how you do it. Best, best way to break it in. Let's do it. in a swimming pool make sure you got stepping stones just get your feet wet show you how to do that it's a new one for me but it's crack on hey so i'm just going to give you a quick walkthrough on how to apply the render with rendering you should always work right to left and um it's I, do you know what I've, it's never actually affected me that much but someone explained it really well so it's when you're pushing the gear into the wall you're also forcing it into the right side of the render so in a sense you just keep pushing it into itself so you're constantly adding pressure because that's the thing with rendering. It's not like plastering where you just want to, you know, whack it on, get it done. You really have to push the render into the block work. If you don't do this, it just won't grip to the uh, to the masonry background you're working on. So again, just load up your hawk, but do smaller sections, obviously, because you're going to be applying a lot more render than usual. You really force it into the block work, pushing it in as you're doing it. So you, there is quite a lot of pressure involved with rendering. And therefore, it means it is quite. It's it's a lot of hard work to it. To be honest, is um, um, you're not going to cover as big of an area at a time because you're obviously you've got to use a lot more, a lot more render than what you would plaster. But again, there is a knack to it also. So you don't really want to play with a render when you're applying it. Maybe flatten it once or twice. But I'm going to show you why in a minute. But your aim isn't to get the render flat. You just want to put it on, and 
to be honest, the less you play with it, the better it's going to be. Because what happens if you keep playing with it, the steel from your trowel pulls the moisture from the back of the render, which means it doesn't have that grip that it once had to the block. This is what I always do in scratch, always. I always rule it. So this is a feather edge. This is basically a straight edge that you use in rendering. And I always rule them a scratch coat flat. This means the top coat is going to be a lot easier to work with. And it just means your wall is going to be a lot flatter. And you don't have to play with it with your trowel, which therefore forces it off. So what I've done is I've applied that section of render. And by the time I've come back to do it, I'm good to rule it. So you rule it flat and then you fill any spots that are a bit low. So any areas that haven't been affected by the rule means that there's not enough render on there to work with. So what you do is you just grab your trowel and hawk, fill the sections, make sure you put a, a large amount of render on, don't put it on thin. Just put big dollops of render on where it's, um, where it's not enough and then you rule it off again using the feather edge or whatever straight edge you've got. And this is just a good way to make sure that your scratch is going to be flat and when it comes to doing the top coat, you've got an even coverage to work on. And if you're new, it's just practice, isn't it? The more you can practice using the straight edge, the easier the rendering's going to be. Because that's the tough part, is getting used to using the straight edge. So I'll show you some more examples of how it works now. You can make a straight edge out of everything. This little bit of timber. It's a bit different one ended. But yeah, you don't need these fancy tools to make a straight edge. A bit of timber, even your trowel. It really doesn't matter. Whatever you've got. Then give it a quick rule off, flatten it, and then we can scratch it.
got to get a totally different mix on now for this wall. So I'm going to mix up a new batch. I've used what I've, what I've had there. Mix up a new batch and get on there. Builders left me that nice little towel. I'll probably use that. This is when you wish you had a labourer to pass you the buckets up. <laughs> Being a, a one-man band, I'll have to graft.
Got it on, which is nice. Around there, inside, and the feet are absolutely soaking. <laughs> so I didn't last the battle, but that's that done. Put my tools away, and I'll be back on the next one to sort it out. So you get to see the finished product in a couple of weeks. Cheers. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. I mean the world to us, and that means you can watch the next part of this video and then learn a bit more about plastering at the same time. So thanks so much. See you in a bit.